We've considered a number of different stress states thus far, and we got to go back and revisit the torsional shear stress state. In this torsional shear stress state, we imagine a solid circular shaft, which is exposed to a torque, as shown in this figure right here. We know that the shear stress varies with radius according to this equation. That is, the shear stress is equal to the applied torque times the distance from the center of the shaft divided by J, where, so there's our J value. Now, now, it's interesting to note that uh, the maximum occurs at the outermost boundary. The maximum shear stress occurs at the outermost boundary and is given by this equation for R equal the radius of the shaft. But it's also important to note that the shear stress goes to zero as R goes to zero. So it's not a particularly efficient way of transmitting torque. So if we were to look at a solid circular section and we were to plot the torsion as we moved away from the center of the shaft, we would find that the torque for a torque applied in this, the shear stress would vary linearly as we moved away from the center. According to that equation, TR over J, where R is now a measure from the center of the shaft. If we were to take a small materials element out of this bar, let's imagine a materials element taken directly from the top of this bar, and I'm going to draw it here for you. This is the face upon which we have the exposed torque. So given Given the right hand rule for this particular shaft, we would be shearing in this direction. That would be our TR over J term. And in order to keep that in equilibrium, we would need a shear stress in this direction. So if we were to look down on that particular element, we would find that by looking down on it, we would have a shear stress like so, and so, and so, like this. And if we were to plot that in more space, you know that we would have an element in pure shear. And so we would have tau max, which is just this TR over J, another tau max right here. And if we were to draw a circle in more space for these, we would find that there is an associated sigma one and sigma two. They are equal and opposite, where sigma two is simply minus sigma one. So this is a pure shear stress state. So if we were to rotate 90 degrees clockwise in more space, we would rotate 45 degrees clockwise in the material space, and that would give us a tensile stress in this direction and a compressive stress of equal and opposite magnitude in this direction. That is the pure shear stress state, which we get about when we have circular shafts exposed to pure torsion. So what if we have a rectangular cross-section? I show here a bar, a long bar with a rectangular cross -section section aligned with the x-axis, and I have the x-axis right here. Let's go ahead and apply a positive torque to this thing, a uh, positive x-directed torque. That would be this direction right here, and that would be exposing this to a rotation that would be counterclockwise if you were looking down the x-axis. Now, this is a rectangular cross-section, so if we were to zoom in on this cross-section as shown here, and if the long side is B and the short side is C, if you look carefully at this, and I, if I were to remove a small materials element right here, we know that we're trying to smear this thing this way. So our shear stresses have to run around like that in some way. It's complicated because it's a rectangular cross-section. But if we remove this materials element out here, what we find is that if this is the, the loaded face of the sample, and right on the outside of that face, we know that there cannot be a shear stress out there. So if we tried to put a shear stress here and here, it would require, equal, for equilibrium's sake, we would need a shear stress on this outer surface. We can't sustain that because it's a free surface where there's no load applied. And so there can be no shear stresses acting in the corners of the sample. So shear is zero at the corners. So what this means is that we have a region around this square cross section that is unloaded material. It's just going along for the ride. So it's adding weight to the shaft, but it's carrying no load. So square or rectangular cross sections are not efficient ways 
ways of carrying torsional shear stresses. But if we do have a rectangular cross section, and if B is the long side, as I just mentioned, so here's a rectangular cross section, it's carrying a torque T, B is the long side, C is the short side, the maximum shear stress occurs at the middle of the long side. So the maximum shear stress occurs at the middle of the long side. That's the B side. And it is given by this equation right here. Now, the this approximate form is a little bit easier to work with because in the form that's shown right here, that is the torque divided by alpha BC squared, you have to look up what the alpha is. And also, if you want to know what the angle of twist is, now oftentimes when we're trying to figure out the torque loading on a shaft, we're also interested in these things for gears, we're interested in these for sprockets and pulleys, we like to relate the power to the torque at a specific radial speed. In metric units, this is easy. Torque is given in Newton meters. Angular velocity is given in radians per second. So Newton meters per second is a work, that is a power, and it's given in watts. So H is in units of watts using the metric system. Torque is in Newton meters and omega is in angular velocity. Uh, if you want to convert from omega to RPM, you can use this equation right here, where H is again still given in watts and N is now in revolutions per minute. If you're using English customary units, everything's a big pain. And so uh, what we have to do is we convert horsepower to torque using this equation right here, where now the torque is given in inch pounds and N is the shaft speed in RPM. If you use this equation, H is in horsepower. You can also use this equation right here, where we get the force out that's acting at the outer boundary of the shaft given a what's called a pitch velocity V in feet per minute. You'll get to more of this as we move through the course.